This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, out to San Frangima, California and the lovely strains of Larry Brown and his orchestra. Hello, Larry. <laughs> yes, I'm moving up on Phil Spatoli and his all-girl orchestra. And by the way, you know, Bubbles holds a uh, world record which you may are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Yes. See, the longest uh, because I was watching some old Letterman stuff before I came on here on YouTube, and all I could uh, all, what I said to uh, uh, my wife Marjorie, uh, see, I just remembered her name, um, was uh, that I said I'm going to talk to Bubbles, and he does hold the record for the longest <laughs> time between. Uh, appearances on that show unless you never appeared again were never asked back again but you were asked to come back again yes 21 years later and 21 years later you thought you had enough material <laughs> I literally could have done the same set from the first show <laughs> and nobody uh, would have noticed nobody would have noticed uh, uh, th that's really quite amazing uh, uh, and it shows the fact that you actually had the complete will to fail in comedy, <laughs> where other people are pushy and they move, push their way to the top, you were kind of like really grinding your way to the middle. Yeah, that's uh, I noticed uh, the the com when I started out. I noticed so many of the comics they just had this incredible drive and just clawing their way to the top. And that was not me. That, well, that lack of drive. I mean, it's too bad. But then again, you probably wouldn't be the comic on stage you are if you were more aggressive. No. You know? What, why do, what, what in you do you think makes you that non-aggressive? Uh, I just like to be left alone. So that's why comedy was to... Comedy wasn't to get famous. It was to get out of a day job. So. Yeah. It was... If that makes any sense, because no, I just I understand. you never you never had day job. I don't think you're always in radio. So. Well, I mean, that's a, it, look. It, it if I, you're going to be particular about it, yeah, it's absolutely a job. You know, I was hired. I get paid. I go to work. I have to go to work for a certain amount of hours every day. You know, it, it's a job, but it's not the traditional job. It's not no, the job I mean, you take because you got to bring home the bacon. It's the kind of job you have because it's something you love. Well, uh, well, I think the, to me the lure for a show business was the. Uh, I thought the short hours when I, I used to watch Hollywood Squares and I thought, oh, those guys, they only work half an hour a day. Then I found out no, they tape like ten shows a day, so they only work one day every two weeks. Thought, oh my God, to be great, what a business, you know? Yeah, yeah no, uh, yeah, it, it it is a great business. I mean, in radio, of course, it. it was at least at that time a business where you had to be there every morning at six in the morning and work for four hours uh, and you had to be there uh, the one thing I didn't like about radio is you were your life was dictated by where the transmitter was you know uh, that that uh, I don't know if people understand what I'm saying but that uh, in a lot of other businesses, you could just take your business with you, right? Like yeah. With comedy, you can take your comedy with you. You can go to Sacramento, and then you can go to Des Moines and whatever. With me, I had to stay in San Francisco because I was attached to a transmitter. Uh, and and also, my my fame was only local. You know, today it's national because most people are like syndicated and so on and so forth. But in those days, uh, it wasn't. So I was, you know, people say, "Boy, you're really killing this town, man!" And I killed in San Francisco. 
There's no question about it. You know, we were very famous and very well known. You couldn't go anywhere without being accosted. I couldn't go anywhere without being accosted. There was free dinners here and free dinners there and, <laughs> and a little pussy on the side, you know. I mean, but then you moved out of the city limits and forget it. Nobody knew who I was, you know. Yeah, looking back, I'm, I'm surprised that your show wasn't syndicated. Well, I tried, you know, uh, and uh, the, I was promised it by uh, by the powers that be at uh, at uh, Live 105 uh, that when I decided not to go to Washington, D.C. to work with Mel Carmazan and hopefully get the same treatment he gave Howard Stern, uh, I because I decided I, I didn't want to let uh, the people down in San Francisco uh, I was promised that they would syndicate me, Live 105 and Entercom, which was the company, and they never did. So you know, uh, but uh, and then they wound up uh, asking me to leave the premises. You know, so, <laughs> um, so you know, I mean, it was really. Uh, it, but it, the, the thing is about doing local radio in those days. Is that outside the city limits? You were, you know, nobody knew who the hell you were. Right. Yeah, I will have to admit that I, I was driving upstate in California. I was coming home one night. Um, I can't remember where it's from. It's probably Guilala. Uh and because I had a girlfriend who lived up there, or had a, a parents had a home up there, and I was coming back, and a cop pulls me over for speeding. And then he looks in the car and he says, oh, you're Alex Bennett. Now, <laughs> I, I found that unusual because this was like 300 miles upstate. Wow. Okay. And he said, well, you know, I'll let you off with a warning. Great show. Wow. And that's the only time I ever really think I got anything out of being a local <laughs> personality. <laughs> you saved one ticket. <laughs> I, I would have people, I would go into restaurants and people would say to me, oh, well, don't, Alex, we'll take care of this. You know, don't, you know, think anything of it. And I went, look, I said, if somebody who was really broke and on his heels came in here, you wouldn't suddenly say, you're not paying for the meal. I said, do that for somebody else. Do that for somebody who needs it. I said, I make a good living. I don't need a free lunch. I said, the day may come when I'm a total failure and I come in here and I need some food. Uh, then you can feed me for free. You know? Somebody said that about America. They, they said they always give you stuff and you don't need it. <laughs> well, no, if, you, if you're really popular and you're making a fortune, yeah, you know, they want to give you, you more stuff. You don't pay for anything. You know, and I always had to tell people, no, I don't comp me. I want, you know, I'll tell you what I did, though. I would I would say don't comp me. And if they still insisted, rather than be, what could I call it? Uh, oh, I don't know, nasty about it. I just said, oh, okay, I gave in, you know. Uh, but basically, I would always say, no, I don't, you know, I don't need this. I'm making a lot of money. I came in here because I can afford a meal here with my friends and so on. And um, please, don't don't comp me. So uh, I, I was, I did not like being comped. I, I, and I also felt maybe that made me owe them something. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I don't owe anybody nothing. <laughs> But, used to take us to what was that place we go to breakfast after the show of the stuffed bagel yeah stuffed bagel we had a deal with stuffed bagel and and uh, uh we fed everybody every morning after the show uh, that was fun yeah we used to have it was kind of like a comedy get together you know and uh i remember one morning we're having lunch breakfast there and jay leno is pontificating about comedy to all these younger comics you know, which was the obnoxious Jay Leno we've all come to know and hate. <laughs> uh, but he was a great comic then. Oh, man. Oh. I mean, it, it, Feldman and I, 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 we went down to 
Frost Amphitheater, C.J. Leno. And uh, we were comp, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and we sat on that lawn, and he did two hours. And after it was all over, I mean, Feldman and I were both gobsmacked at how good he was. Yeah. And how he could hold an audience for two hours. You know, most comics did 45 minutes. So, yeah, that's longer than a movie. So Yeah, two hours. And he would start off his act by doing topical, of-the-moment material. So you thought that everything else that followed it was fresh as well. So about 15 minutes in the act, he's not doing the new stuff. He's starting to go to the old stuff, the tried and true stuff, and everybody thinks it's fresh. I mean, it, it, it just an amazing stand-up. And then he went and did The Tonight Show, and now he sucks. I mean, what makes him think he can do um, uh, You Bet Your Life? Come on. Yeah. You know? Uh, but, he, yeah, when he got to The Tonight Show, he took his, he took his edgy stuff away. Well, he took he the was... edgy stuff away, but more than that, he wanted everybody to love him. You know? Most of all, NBC. So he did anything he could to keep NBC happy. You know, it was uh, it was very sad. Very sad what happened to him. How do you think Letterman would have done if he'd gotten that spot? Gotten what spot? The Tonight Show. You know, I think what happened to him is much better. Because if he went to NBC, if he, you know, if he went to NBC, went, did The Tonight Show, uh, there are certain things that would be expected out of him. When he went to CBS, they didn't have anything, you know. So he could do anything he damn pleased, you know, and didn't have to consider the, the, the head honchos and so on. Uh, I think he did better by going where he went, you know. And he didn't want to go there. He didn't want to take the CBS deal. He wanted the Tonight Show. He wanted, yeah, he wanted that spot. And he was told by, um, uh, who was, who was uh, Carson's producer? Um, uh, not the Cordova, the, uh, the LaSalle. LaSalle. He was told by Peter LaSalle that, uh, uh, you know, you don't want the Tonight Show now. You know, especially when Leno had done it for a short time and then they were talking about giving it to Letterman. They said, you don't want it now. That that show's been spoiled. You know, it's been ruined. And um, then he called Johnny. And Johnny told him, hey, if they were doing to me what they did, what they're doing to you, I'd leave in a second. Really? And wow. So, and so he went over to CBS, you know. And uh, ultimately, I mean, Leno wound up getting the ratings, but... CBS was making so much money anyway off of Letterman that he was probably the big winner. I mean, all along, Letterman was getting a bigger paycheck than Leno was ever getting. Oh, he got huge money on because that. Because yeah. he, was, he was of value to CBS uh, because they had, nothing, they, they had stuff in that time slot. It just uh, never worked. I mean, they had the, uh, uh, what's it, the Pat Sajak show which I remember. And it was, uh, it, it didn't last very long, you know. No, we both thought he was going to be good. <laughs> well, I, you know, I interviewed, I've talked about this, I've interviewed, uh, had interviewed him years earlier. And uh, I thought he had a really snarky, bitter sense of humor. He did, and he, he was funny, and uh, yeah. he, had a, he had a broadcast background like Carson. And yeah. Yeah, and I thought, you know, I also thought, and I, as you just mentioned it, you see, I think that the trouble is is that a lot of times to do that kind of show, people go out and say, well, let's hire a comic. But a comic isn't what you want. What you want is a broadcaster. I mean, Letterman was a broadcaster. Right. Okay? And what you want is a broadcaster. You don't want a comedian to host those shows. Because they think differently than a broadcaster does. And a broadcaster thinks like, I've told you, I think, that you're going to be there tomorrow night. Uh, don't top the comic. Be fun, not funny. You know, 
I mean, if you look at Letterman, all his stuff was based on having fun. I was, Just before coming in here, we were watching a whole bunch of his bits he did called How's the Weather, in which he would just go into phone books from various parts of the country. And I, I told Marjorie, I said, we couldn't do that today because there's no such thing as a phone book anymore. <laughs> yeah. right? And they would say, okay, we're calling Racine, Wisconsin. Let's riffle through it. Let's point. Okay, here's a number, and they call it. Half the time... The phone call wouldn't even go through. The other half of the time, people weren't answering. When they finally did, it it became hilarious. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, this thing was so simple in con, and all he's doing is calling these people to say, "How's the weather?" <laughs> and only a broadcaster would come up with that kind of concept. You know, a comedian hosting the show would say, "Well, how are we going to make funny out of this?" And and Letterman was just fun, and he could he could pull it off, you know. So, so how is everything else in San Francisco? Is it still uh, getting to be more and more miserable? Yeah, I think the the mayor finally realized it's not a good idea to let people steal a thousand dollars from stores. <laughs> so they're trying to they're trying to correct that. So I don't know what's going on. Wait a minute, happen. what's this about stealing a thousand dollars from stores? If you it's nine hundred, you can go to a store and take nine hundred fifty dollars worth of merchandise, and if you do that, you don't even get arrested. <laughs> Where? In what world is that practical? Yeah, it's a. I guess it's under nine fifty is considered a misdemeanor, and we don't prosecute misdemeanors anymore. So. Oh my. <laughs> God. So they've closed the biggest uh, stores for Walgreens. People go into Walgreens and do that. And so they've closed 22 Walgreens here. Because of the theft? Yeah. That's a lot of stores. I didn't know there were that many Walgreens. <laughs> wow. They've closed 22. So. Wow. I think our new district attorney isn't going to prosecute. I think even in some cases murder. I don't, you know, I mean... It, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe am I? Are we old farts when we say that's kind of a crime? Yeah, that's not going to work out well. So, so in other words, Walgreens went out of business because people were stealing from them. Well, they didn't go out of, but they've closed seven twenty-two stores. But yeah. uh, there's still a few left. But yeah, they would. Uh, they would have gone out of business. They just kept going like that. How about my Walgreens down in the marina? Is that still that open? That one's still open. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, because I that was my that was my drugstore. That's where I went to buy all my drugs. <laughs> well, that and a guy on a street corner, but you know, it's another kind of drug I was buying. Um, so that oh boy, boy, and how's the how's the homeless problem in San Francisco? Yeah, I'm still dealing with that. It's. Uh I've noticed that some people have sprouted tents up around the Safeway, Marina Safeway. Oh, really? Yeah, so they're living around there now, but they usually come by and stop that after a while. The Safeway, for people who don't live in California, is a, uh, is a grocery chain. I don't think they have them outside of, outside of California, do they? I don't think so, no. Like, you know, um, and that was my, my local supermarket. Yeah, where I went to, for all my stuff because they were open twenty four seven. So and it always had a reputation of being a great place to pick up women, which I never in my entire life I never saw anyone get picked up in that safe way. Didn't we do a bit about that on the radio? I think show? we talked about it. Yeah, about you know it's pickup night down at uh, Safeway. It was supposed to be Wednesday night at Safeway. That was it. Was it Wednesday night at six? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go down there if you want to get picked up if you're a woman and want to meet guys and. You know, very, very strange Safeway. Uh, Interesting name, Safeway. Does that mean that uh, <laughs> their food wasn't poison? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Why did they pick that name? <laughs> yeah, where did they come up with that name? Um, or maybe a lot of stores were selling tainted merchandise 100 years ago. I don't know. Well, you know, you know what I remember? What was that uh, 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 fries? Now, what do you think of when I say fries? As a fries? store, as a store, as a store. Fries. Yeah. I think of the um, the great uh, electronics store. Yeah. Do you know what it started out as? A no supermarket. Idea. Really? Yes, it was a supermarket chain. 
I didn't know that. And when when electronics came in, I think they sold a couple electronics in their supermarket. Before you knew it, they became an electronics store as opposed to a supermarket. Yeah. Well, they were great at that. They just closed a big one down in Sunnyvale. But, no, they I, closed I, fries that. completely. I mean, yeah. that was my temple. I would go down there, and it, you know, it was in. In case people don't know what I'm talking about, this was a super huge electronics store. I mean, two football fields. Everything you ever wanted in electronics, from TV sets to uh, I don't know a fuse, was at, at, at Fry's. And I would go down there just to walk the aisles and look at everything. And usually, I'd wind up buying something, you know. And just Amazing a, store. I loved it. Yeah, they went out of business. And I'm, I, I don't know why the reason for it, but I would say it probably is something like Amazon or whatever. It's, it's got to be Amazon, yeah. You know, where, you know, you can buy all that same stuff now by walking the aisles at Amazon, as it were. Uh, but, uh, you know, I started thinking about a lot of things that have, have changed in our lives. And, and I mentioned a moment ago the phone book. There are no phone books anymore, are there? No. Uh, they, they, don't, no, they don't. Send, they used to send them out. They don't send them out anymore. There's no yellow pages. You know, we, remember you go to the yellow pages. I don't know, look up. I uh, need a grocery store. I look up. Uh, go to the uh, yellow pages. The internet killed a lot of businesses. Oh, oh my God, have they? And what have, what have they killed? Well, they killed travel agents. Uh, they it, killed fries. They killed uh, newspapers. Yeah. I mean, all of this, but then again, that's just time passing. You know, you got to remember when I'm talking about, oh, the yellow pages are gone. What happened to the yellow? Hey, I, I'm 82 years old. I'm talking about when I was a kid, there was a phone book. Okay? To a kid today, you mentioned phone book. They don't even know what you're talking about. Didn't people used to say, watch your phone number? And you'd say, I'm in the book. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And well, what's your name? Well, that's in the book too. That was the follow-up <laughs> line on that one. But uh, uh, you know, I mean, it just—it's just, it's just uh, uh, times change and uh, things change. And pe- you know, when I what I did, um, uh, I may have already done this bit on the air. I was going through my phone contacts. I almost said phone book. I was going through my phone contacts, and my phone contacts um, are, uh, I'm I'm going through them because I had to figure out who I wanted to put in a certain list and so on. I'm going through them, I'm going, dead, 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 and I decided that maybe I should, uh, maybe I've done this already, folks, on the air, go through my phone list and get rid of all the dead people and the people that I haven't uh, you know talked to in years but do you have people in your well you don't have a, a do you have your phone do you have phone numbers in your phone I do you have a flip and phone I, I also have a little book that has old numbers in it I okay it. now it, it, is it wrong that you feel that maybe you shouldn't like my friend Steve Gruber, he's been dead for what five, six, seven years, something like that. I still have his phone number, and I'm going. If I get rid of it, am I am I erasing the memory? Yeah, I, that's why I don't I don't delete them because I like to keep a memory. And uh, yeah, I've often thought about yeah. calling the couple numbers. I thought I'd like to call and see if someone else has their number now. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, I have I have um, a, a, a lot of people on my phone that are um, are dead. And I'm going, why am I keeping their name in here? Why can't I get rid of it? Why can't I delete it? Yeah, I would keep them. That's a good memory. I guess. But it also fills out your phone list innumerably. <laughs> well, uh, when you have more dead than alive, it might be time to do a little trimming. Yeah, yeah. So anything else that's, uh, that's gone forever that we don't... Uh, I imagine if we, well, the either the BlackBerry, they got rid of the BlackBerry. You never even got into that technology. I'm not even sure what the, what was the BlackBerry. It was it was basically it was a messaging system, you know, 
where we now call it text. It wasn't a phone. It was just text? Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would use my BlackBerry to call your BlackBerry, and then I would, on this keyboard, type in a message. I'll meet okay. you downtown, whatever. And I know the uh, I know the guy that uh, he named the BlackBerry. Ian, what's his name? Mark Hershon. Mark Hershon. He works for a company that makes up these names. He came up with. They make up names. Yeah. He he I said, "How did you come up with BlackBerry?" He said, "When he looked at it, he said it looked like a BlackBerry." <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And he also, I think, came up with the name Swiffer as well. Swiffer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, we've run out of time here. It's just flown by. I just uh, talking with you is just an absolute delight, well, Larry. We- I, it is. I don't. Uh, as long as I don't depress you, I'm happy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye. C'est Gabney, la grande broadcast never cam, Ricain. Par les radios comme vous n'en avez jamais entendu. Hmm, oui, oui. I thought we'd just play our French version of it. For the hell of it. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to our Friday night version of uh, the uh, the Ramble. And uh, we have some people waiting for us in the waiting room uh, of our uh, Zoom. And so I think maybe, maybe it is just time for us to um, uh, bring them in here. Hold on a second. Let me push admit all. Okay, I admit all. I uh, did this, I did that. Wait a minute. Oh, well, uh, Kevin has uh, just disappeared uh, there. Uh, oh, some, somebody's got their audio up. I th- oh, I th- I, no, it's not you. I think it's Kevin, and he's not there. So, we, <laughs> you know, uh, let me see here. I can mute him. Let me see how I mute him. Here. Just fucking block him. There we go. Oh, ask to unmute. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, we muted him. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my audience, folks. They don't care about me. They don't love me. They just, you know, they just, they just uh, t- uh, zoom me and then they leave. Okay. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, I I muted you, Kevin. Uh, can you hear me, Kevin? Have a... Yeah, I muted you. You have to unmute yourself uh, because you left your uh, you left your au- you left your audio going. Wait a minute here. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Ask to unmute. Okay, I'm asking you to unmute. Okay. I texted him there and told him. Yeah, you just got to go. You just go to where the microphone is and you can unmute it. <laughs> been fine if he hadn't left his audio on. Yeah, you left your audio on, so we had to mute you. <laughs> that, that's the... Let's see. I'll figure this out here in a minute. <laughs> Let me see here. I, th- I think you got it. I think you got it. A- ask Jeff. He'll tell you how to do it. Ask Jeff. Guess what? What? I'm in operation. No problem. Jeff, what do I do? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah. Restart it. Yeah. Well, anyway. So so it's a big we'll day. Get a bag of potato chips. It's a big day today. We got our we got our refrigerator. They actually got it up. Oh great. I don't what know if that's that, well, that's what she said, right? He finally got it up. No, he, he, the thing was, in case people are not aware of this, I, I, we wanted to buy a refrigerator, so we had this one we really wanted. You know, it looked good, it had kind of all the electronics you like in the thing and whatever. And um, the, our um, our super comes up to disconnect the the water, and he looks at the. He said, "What did you get?" And we said, "Got this." And he said, "Uh uh uh uh." I said, what's wrong with it? He says, nothing wrong with it. It won't fit in the elevator. So I, I, even with the doors off, it won't fit in the elevator. So uh, we, uh, um, uh, so he said, uh, uh, he looked around and he said, here, here's a whirlpool that's just the right dimensions. So we went and got it, okay? And they came today, and sure enough, at about an inch to spare, the thing got through the uh, through the elevator door. 
uh, it's not exactly state of the art. Okay, I, that's a, it doesn't have any bells and whistles electronically that I like in something like that. But hey, what does a refrigerator have to do? It has to make ice, which this thing is barely doing yet. And it has to uh, keep uh, things frozen and keep things cold, right? That's all it needs to yep. do, you know. So uh, we, what do you need the bells and whistles for? So, but it's, Where I live, you could just set the shit outside and it'd be rock solid in about 20 minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I told Marjorie, I said, look, you know, if we just turn off the heat, tomorrow we can just take all the frozen foods out of there before they get here and not yeah. worry about it. You know, it's five degrees here. So. Yeah, open the windows and uh, the frozen foods will stay frozen. So will we, however, you know. But anyway, so we got this thing and it's fine. You know, it's it's just uh, it, 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 it's having it's slowly making ice. Uh, and I don't know why it's slowly making ice, but he, he the super told us that it may take a day before it really starts spewing out the ice. So. Yeah. We'll wait, you know. I don't care because the reason I wanted to make the ice is Marjorie freezes her ice in in cubes, in trays, and then she empties the tray out into a bowl, a, a, a metal bowl, which sits in the refrigerator, taking up a great deal of of space. So now, if we can get this thing to make cubes, she doesn't have to do that anymore. And we can have more space in the refrigerator, but the yeah, you refrigerator. You really want a lot from your refrigerator, don't you? Yeah. Well, Marjorie, you know, she she bakes. She when she makes a like a soup or a stew or something like that, she doesn't just make one like two portions, one for me and one for her. She makes. And she has these army cauldrons, right? And she cooks in those pots, and then she puts them in the refrigerator, taking up all the space you possibly can take. And uh, so now we're going to have to do something about that. She's going to have to st I told her, look, I don't mind if you only make soup for 10, okay? You know, I'm really not going to complain. But she doesn't like, she really doesn't like to, you know? So what the hell? So the, anyway, we got that. And uh, then our, uh, our our landlord got the old refrigerator out of our place and took it down in the elevator because he took the doors off and everything. And it just man, it it was you 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 couldn't have put a hair in there, you know. In fact, the hair might have given it some friction, you know. I mean, it was just something else. But anyway, we're we're fine now. Uh, we have now we have a new stove and a new refrigerator, and uh, you know we're pretty much uh, good to go. So you know we've redone our kitchen, and uh, our our super came up and helped us. I gave him a hundred bucks today because he hauled away the old refrigerator on top of everything else. What? What was that? That was my text that I didn't mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> what is that sound you had? <laughs> so distracting tonight. Gee. What is? Uh, what I is... know. I, f I feel like Ray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two points. You're going to have to go to like final written warning after the next. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking going to point out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so. You know, that's that's it, it, my big. You see, it's what happens when you're my age. The big thrill is, hey, Gary, guess what? We just got ourselves a refrigerator. Oh, you know. You want to speak about old age? But I like the stove better than I like the refrigerator. But don't tell the refrigerator that. Oh, glasses. You know, <laughs> what? You, Brian's you, you, got glasses. Brian, glasses. Yes. When did yeah. you get those? We, we we had the kids had their shots today their their booster no their yeah their boosters mm -hmm. and we we're goofing off and I picked up these and said oh yeah my dad my stepfather he used to buy these just the cheap ones you know yeah for reading well that's all you that's all you and need then because I put you them on and I was like holy crap man this thing is so clear <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what happens when you get older there buddy so you yeah, haven't yeah. been well, you, I, you, I had to buy them the 30 bucks in foster grants and man they uh, everything uh, is so clear there are two I perfect like here yeah and I right. like, oh my God. Brian, did you get your aarp yet 
Yeah, I have a mail that's stuff in. I can't get it. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, get the card. You get your discounts at Denny's. Yeah. 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 I get discounts at hotels. Yeah, wherever we travel. Yeah. And at nursing homes and everywhere. A card. They give me a card. I don't know what to do with it. Well, anyway, the, the thing is, one. you got to pay money. The thing is, uh -huh. now that you know that you need glasses and haven't been willing to admit it up until today, I'm okay. not admitting it. Oh, <laughs> I'm just keeping them. Well, around. you know, there are two things you, <laughs> in life. As you get older, you have to admit, and and once you do, you feel better about things. One is that you need glasses, and when I've decided I need them, I asked the ophthalmologist, uh, "What do I need?" And they said, "You just need magnifiers. Don't don't buy them here at our fancy eyeglass mm -hmm. store." Just go down to any drug store and start putting them on till something feels good, right? Amazon, five CBS, pairs, five, five yeah. pairs for twelve bucks. Yep, oh, my, my them all over the house. My favorite of these with the with the with a little. See, I like this thing here. I don't know why, but there these are three for uh, I don't know uh, twenty bucks or fifteen yeah, bucks. These, or these are Nike fakes, man. Five of them for twelve bucks, and I threw them all over the yeah. house. One in yeah. my truck. Yeah, yeah. and and the point yeah. is, the reason you need these. The cheap ones, the cheap magnifiers is, you're always going to lose your glasses. Yes. And you're always going to, like I say, okay, I'm going to leave a bunch of glasses here where I do with the work, and then I'll have glasses by the bed and whatever. And eventually I've got five glasses sitting by the bed <laughs> because I, you know, I put them on and I'm walking around and all of a sudden I take them off and I go, I'm going to go to sleep now. And there's another pair, right? So. Yeah, Tiffany Virginia. has. So I, I I can see long with fine, and I guess because I'm old now, but my, my close thing. But it's, uh, Tiffany had to get glasses because she has problems seeing being a long distance. So well, that's probably so, why you did so. Uh, that's your uh, Tiffany's your wife, right? Well, yes, maybe. Yeah. 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 Well, that or, or soon to be wife. Uh, yeah. But you you better be glad she was bad of see, uh, sighting seeing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe that's why she's acting different lately with the glasses. She was blurry faced <laughs> like he didn't see that. No, oh, I thought I looked so nice, no wrinkles. And then I look at this thing, I see all my pores and everything. I'm like, what the hell? You and thought I, you were looking pretty damn good, didn't you? So. Uh, let me put on my glasses and look at you. Oh, my God. And then, <laughs> but I always used to wonder why people look like this when they're doing stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I was doing that for like 10 minutes, and all of a sudden I looked up and I go, what the hell? That's what yeah, I'm Alex asking. needs glasses to find the new refrigerator. Well, the other thing you, you're going to do eventually, I don't know if it'll happen to you. It doesn't look like it's going to happen to you. But one day you've lost enough hair that you finally say, I'm going to shave it on top of my head. You know? Uh, that, that That's... That, what? Nothing. I got hair on the side of my head. And nothing on the top. Yeah. Well, you, you see, know, you like, should shave some of that off. Just. But most people don't see the top. Uh, of my head uh, I always wear a ball cap. I don't care. Um, Robert Schimmel, now another dead comic, uh, said to me once. He said, uh, "Why don't you just cut your hair short on the side, just short all over?" And I said, "Why?" He says, "It's preemptive baldness. <laughs> what it does is it it it." Uh, it, it it's not like you're admitting anything. It's just that it doesn't. If you have a lot of long hair here and nothing on top, you look like Danny DeVito, you know. <laughs> but if you just cut it short all around, it doesn't look as bald. Bald. Yeah. So now, in your case, uh, Brian, I think you're one of those horrible people that's never going to completely lose his hair. Uh, my mother's father, Italian, and had I like how mine, mine thin, mine's thinning on top, and it's the wavy, so it's just like him. Yeah. Yeah, but by the time I was your age, I had had a significant loss, you know. So, whatever. And and look at look at Vernon. He's got he's got a full head of hair, right, Vernon? Yeah. But you're in the most one of the most you're in one of the most infected uh, states in the union, aren't you? They tell us our positivity rate. Yeah, what is the positivity rate? Wow. Last week it was 29.6%. Holy wow. shit. Yeah. Okay. Around here it's around. Yeah, but you got to remember there are only three people in Kentucky. <laughs> and two of yeah, them are senators. And two of them are cousins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, I, started, I started wearing my N95 mask at Home Depot now instead of just one of those washable cloth masks. I've got my N95 on today when I'm there. The N95s are considered to be the thing now, right? Gold standard. 
Yeah. I hate them. Just <laughs> hate them. To begin with, it takes two straps to put them on, and I can't figure out which one goes on top, which one goes on the But Do I use it as a chin strap? You know? No. Yeah. I mean, I wish they would come out with, like, an N95 that was... Maybe have the ones with straps still go around the ears. So, one strap goes so, around the ears, but... I'd like to talk about N95 for a minute. So you got to... You would, thing, would you? Really? The thing with the N95 that... Vernon is it's got to fit your face right uh, in the medical profession doctors and nurses they get several brands or several sizes and some doctors it's got to fit around you don't have facial hair here but you oh, you got a mustache but it's got to fit your face right and if it doesn't fit tight on the sides or, or around you then it becomes as worthless as a cloth mask if the cloth mask fits you better you can always wear a surgical mask over that if you want, but N95s are a pain. I mean, I, I got a bunch of them here, but I don't wear them unless they go to Costco, and they're uncomfortable. Well, I'm thinking about how, you know, to begin with, uh, we do know that if you, if, if, they, they, they today said that Omicron, is the, uh, the vaccine is 90% effective against Omicron. In some people. Oh, no, no, 90%. Oh effective overall if you've had your booster shot yeah. okay uh so knowing that i mean why should i care about whether my mask is too tight enough or not see I, i'm gonna assume alex that you like most people get your uh covet advice from the news no i no. don't i don't get my COVID advice from i get it all from you alan well, I, <laughs> I get it all from you because you you, become, you, you have become on, the expert on this and listen to what dr Fauci or dr gottlip has to say you get it directly from their lips <clears throat> and you don't the news you know fox <clears throat> news says you don't need a mask and msnbc says you need seven hey masks hey and, Fauci <laughs> changes his his ideas all the time you know, I mean, uh, uh, a year ago, we were told the regular masks were all fine. People were making their own, and they were wearing handkerchiefs over their mouths and so on. So, so Brian will probably agree with this. Data changes constantly in science and in medicine. So a year ago, a, a, any mask is better than no mask. And some masks are better. If they, the better what I'm fit, saying is I think, I think so far as infection is concerned, we are on the tail end of this. And if you're, like you said, uh, uh, you got your vaccines and boosted, uh, the chance of you becoming really sick and need hospitalization or death is slim. But with Omicron, Omicron is bypassing a lot of the, the a lot of people are having breakthrough infections, but are not getting really sick. Well, guess who didn't have a breakthrough infection and is dead now from COVID? Uh, uh, Donald what, Trump, that would be great. No, n no, uh, meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf. Oh, yeah. And he yeah, was a right. big. He was a big. Um, he was against the government mandates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't let the door kick you in the ass on the way no, out. Yeah. Okay. Don't let it hit you on the way out the the human door. Who was it? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah. Bat out of hell, you know. Yeah. Well, bat in hell yeah. now. Yeah. So you know. I didn't know he was against them. Yeah. Okay. I love this. I love this. Today we lost two people. We lost Meatloaf and uh, we lost uh, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson. Yeah. And they say comedy legend Louis Anderson. How many here consider Louis Anderson a comedy legend? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was funny, but not a legend. No, he's not. No, George Carlin. Or yeah. Anything. But comedy legend Louis Anderson died today. They just throw these terms around. I guess it was musical legend Meatloaf, which is probably more, well, it's maybe more applicable than com comedy legend Meatloaf. Are but, they going to say youth guru hmm. when you pass away? When you I go? That term again? When, I'm, when I go, they're going to say, who's Alex Bennett? Right. You know. Um, I'm, I'm sure. The guy that complained about the refrigerator. For I'm sure that when I go, you know how you're always surprised, and like, like I was surprised that when, when uh, what's his name died. Uh, um, um, oh God. Saget. Saget. Yeah. Bob Saget oh, yeah. died. 
I, oh, am, I, I, I knew that people would feel bad about it, but I didn't know it would get the national acclaim that it did, you know? And you're very surprised when all of a sudden these people get it. And it's well, because he, everybody... On TV, too. Well, everybody liked him. Yeah. Everybody yeah. It, it liked him. He Nobody had a bad thing media. to say about Saget. But what I'm saying is I didn't expect that he would get that kind of send-off, okay? okay. He, he looked good. Huh? He, was he always looked good. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He was and a I good comic. He was on TV. You know, a lot of people knew his name. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like Alex Bennett, nobody knows. His nobody name. knows who the fuck I am. <laughs> nobody cares. You know, I went through the five stages of show business, which was who's Alex Bennett? That's stage one. Stage two is, oh, that's Alex Bennett. The next stage, three, was get me Alex Bennett. Okay. Stage four was get me an Alex Bennett type. And stage five was who's Alex Bennett? So, you know, those are the five stages of fame. I thought there was a fuck Alex Bennett somewhere. So, well, <laughs> who the fuck was Alex Bennett? What? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say, Vernon? No, it's the fifth stage should be who the fuck was Alex Bennett. Yeah, well, that's, really, yeah, that's probably what it's going to be, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger was in a five vehicle accident in Los Angeles today. Oh. Was he hurt? Uh, yes. At 4 yeah, was... on Sunset Boulevard, it just popped up here. I don't know. Did he have his donkey with him? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean his donkey? Yeah, I don't know what it, the donkey thing is. Yeah. He's got he's got a donkey that runs around in his house. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's kind of a nut. You think? <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, hi, uh, Josh. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh yeah, Josh's team is still in the playoffs. Ah, yeah. What playoff? Can I ask Cowboys. you what playoffs are that? <laughs> it's almost time to take the Cowboy Nation sign down, Charlie. Well, I'm having, I'm, ha I'm having, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having to put up with Australian tennis in this house. You know, oh. the well, guy, the, the guy sued. The, the famous tennis player. Is suing Australia for six million dollars. Yeah, well, a lot of good, lot of luck with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, let's face it, they could do anything they goddamn please. They're Absolutely. a country, you yes, know. They're a country. He he is probably guaranteed that he will never be allowed back. Oh yeah, yeah, unless he wins the suit, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but yeah. That's likely. I, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't understand uh, why he was the way he was. You know, he could have just, and it, it looks like they're not going to let him in for the French Open or Wimbledon. You he know, suspended before the lawsuit. He was suspended for three years in in Australia, and other countries are saying, "Well, we're going to stick with Australia. We're not going to let him in either." Well, didn't he learn that he went to court and he didn't win? Yep. You know, I mean, I guess well, he's Trump got... did that 60 times and he's still trying. Yeah. I hope they whipped him when he got back to Serbia. Yeah. I wonder if it, the papers, when they, if they're going to call them serving a paper and he's going to hit it with a tennis ball, a tennis racket. Oh, forget it. I can't do jokes anymore either. I'll just sit here while you guys talk. <laughs> Did we hear the revelation about the document dump today? What what about the document dump? Oh. Did it come okay. out of Trump's of ass? What is what one what, of the what document? One of the documents that got delivered today from the archives to the, the committee was a draft executive order that was put together by unknown person, and this was to have the Secretary of Defense seize the voting machines in those six states. That were oh God! It never got executed, but there was a draft executive order created, and they got it in their hands now, right? Yep. Wow. Wow. So somebody thought about it. Yep. They wanted it. Oh, done. he was serious. He was serious. You know. Yeah. 
I mean, I can't. can't it, the main thing that the main thing that stopped it, I think, was the in mass threat of resignation at the Justice Department. Do you think that stopped him? I think it probably played on on it somewhat because that was one of the other things that we heard was that the Justice Department, uh, all of the the mucky mucks in the in the upper echelons of the Justice Department, not just the Attorney General, they all threatened to resign. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I, I said before the whole thing started. I, I, at one point, I think on this show, said, I don't think he's going to leave without a fight. You know, I, I, I don't think he's going to admit it, that he lost. I mean, how can you not admit you lost when you lost by five million votes? <laughs> Seven million. Well, one huh? Seven million. That Seven lost million. in Florida by 50 percentage points and won't concede. For, for the house race. Wow. Wow. Well, 69 to 19% or something. But why, why is he still, why, why isn't his ass in jail right now? What's happening? Why is nobody really going after him? They're just posturing. They're grabbing the low hanging fruit first, and the low hanging fruit will cut deals to avoid jail sentences or that type of stuff, and they'll turn over stuff on Trump. Well, I think what's funny is that his son, Eric, has turned over information that's going to get his brother and sister and father in trouble. It would uh, be absolutely. Uh, state, state attorney general, the New York attorney general. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like trusting your family. And he was supposedly the dumb one. Yeah. yeah, but you know they always with politicians they always posture and say, "Boy, we're going to get the goods on him. Boy, we're going to get him in jail soon. Boy, we're going to take care of him." Right. And then they never do. I mean, I remember when Cuomo got kicked out, they were all going, oh, we're going to go after him. We're going to go after what? Everybody's gone, okay, no more Cuomo. We don't need to go after him. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we got Kathy. Well, no, the reason they got rid of Cuomo is the people who got rid of Cuomo were the people who were going to best, best benefit by him lose, uh, being thrown out of office. Yep. Uh, uh, now they're not charging him, so he can run again. Yeah. Can he? Why not? Yeah, he I don't know. Cars with anything? I yeah, vote. I'd vote. He, he just resigned. He resigned. Yeah. He can. He can go back to running again, yeah. especially since he wasn't charged and convicted. Do you know something? If he ran to, right. if he ran in the next election, I'd vote for him. You know. Donate your old refrigerator to him. Huh? Yeah, right. Donate my old refrigerator to him. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. But. Uh, I, I saw my super take this thing down in the elevator all by himself, like a 250-pound refrigerator. Oh. Man, how do you do that? And he's a, little, he's a short guy. It's leverage. New Yorkers, you know they're all strong. Just he, had one of those, he had one of those refrigerator movers. You know what they had when they came up from the, in the elevator with the thing? They had these straps around themselves. Yeah. And the one strap went under and went over to the other guy who had the straps over his shoulder. And they were just, you know. Human dollies. The human wow. dollies, yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I could never do that for a living. No. You know? I got a new refrigerator a couple of months ago, and that's how they bought it into my house, was with one of those mechanisms you're talking about, Alex. Yeah. And these guys look like they played, they look like they played the offensive uh, tackles. But why don't they? Why don't they just have like a uh, uh, you know a hand cart, a motorized yeah. hand cart? I guess that's. Supposedly, I asked him about this, and he said they have more control. <clears throat> really? Yeah. They have more control, you know, moving it than than you would with the dollar. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was like I thought it was like you know, mother puts a toddler on her <laughs> front. It also <laughs> forces them to use their legs. Really? Yeah, yeah, make them use their legs more. Yeah, so they don't hurt. Yeah, but how many years can they do that before they don't have legs left? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, that's well, a way to pick stuff back. up. You know. So is my am I looking too orange tonight? No. Oh, okay, no. good. Because I turned my lights more orange. Mm -hmm. Because you I actually look your your skin tone looks better tonight. Really? <laughs> thank you. So. Yours doesn't, but thank you. I don't care. Uh, yeah. About me. Yeah. So anyway, back to Josh. Well, Josh, what do you think about all of this? Uh, uh, 
Trump having to turn over his, the Supreme Court saying that Trump has to turn over his uh, papers, which he did. He didn't put up much of a fight, you know. Yeah, that was well, no it surprise. Wasn't, it wasn't Trump turning it over. It oh. wasn't Trump oh. turning it over. It was the oh. archives. Oh, it was the archives. archives. Okay. Yeah. Yep, the National Archives. Now, did, does yeah. he? Yeah, well, they, they, right, they hold the records, the NARA. But let me Whatever ask you this. Did. Does yeah. he, th did he have to turn those papers over to the archives? Yeah, well, yeah, the all, there's a... Uh, I mean, there's official documents that get created by the White House, um, or well, the executive branch, but you know, in, our, in this case, the White House, like all the emails are logged and, you know, memorandums, all that kind of stuff all gets logged. And then it goes um, at certain points based on what it was. And there's a lot of rules to this stuff. I've looked a little bit up before. It does go to the archives at some point. And then when the administration is done and closed out it all goes over and it doesn't get released for a certain period of time again depending on what it was and when it was written and all that and then you know the nara goes through it or whatever and with the help of some other agencies you know they they even keep you know some of the stuff that was classified or whatever but it just doesn't get released what what habit. happens what happens though if, if much goes it, into it what what happens if the president wants it for his presidential library does he then request them from the archives yeah, yeah i mean they, they can either yeah i mean they'll have like a duplicate there or if they want the original some of them will be housed at the library but all the presidential libraries now are are basically operated and ran in conjunction with the National Archives mm -hmm. and they're basically like subsidiary or sub branch or whatever you would, would want to call it of the NARA, the National you know, Records Administration. Mm -hmm. um, and they run, well, they don't, I'm sorry, they don't run the libraries, but they sort of operate or run the archives side of the library. Because okay. the libraries now are more than just a room full of papers. You know, the libraries are museums and uh you know learning centers um you know and and all various sorts of other things that range from tourist type attractions you know see yeah. a mock-up of the oval office as it was life-size to to an actual separated room where you have to make an appointment etc to do research you know a nice quiet room where you can go and view in some cases, uh, original documents and take pictures of them, photocopies, whatever, for research, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, for that kind of thing. And they work with the, the National Archives. But presidents have some power, you know, as to things that they don't want to go out, uh, you know, like things with executive privilege and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then they can, they can re request those things not to be released until the law says that they have to be. And in some cases, some of that stuff is pretty long, you know, like 50 years or 40 years or whatever it is. And then it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come out a lot of times till after the president and a lot of other people have died. And, you know, there's no one around anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we still get documents from the Kennedy administration now every once in a while. I mean, you know, every other year or so, they'll put out another 500 documents from the Kennedy administration or whatever. Like, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, they put out about a few hundred documents that were related to the week of the Cuban Missile Crisis, or the two weeks. And, uh, you know, it, a lot of it changed some of the narrative in the historiography. Is there somebody, is there somebody, let me ask you, is there somebody at the White House, for instance, who, like, as soon as... Trump writes something, he immediately takes the paper and puts it into a folder for the archives. I don't know if it's done that way, but there is a, there are people, there's an entire office that does sort of do that, yes. I mean, I, I mean, as far as I understand it, I mean, never worked at the White House, but that's my understanding. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just waiting to see. There's a group I, of people that do that on a regular, on a regular basis. I'm I mean, waiting. You know, I'm, I'm just the only way the president now. Yeah where the people that work for him are going to keep these things out of the archive is to literally, like, scribble something to someone else, handwritten on a note, and then, you know, make sure they burn it when they're done with it or something. I mean, they collect almost everything now. Wow. So where Which is it? probably where's the, good. Where's the Trump Library? It's, it's already been announced. It's going to be a, a newspaper stand in Orlando. 
I was thinking, I was thinking a newspaper stand in Tijuana. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's even announced it, and I don't think he's going to have one. I bet she doesn't. Uh, he'll he'll have one. He'll they'll have to have. I mean, they'll they'll there'll be something because the government allows an endowment for uh, all of them, um, and that endowment is meant for the part of it that the government would have direct control over, such as the records, the archives, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then that endowment will operate that on a yearly basis. They will have a director there, a staff, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the presidents themselves, through whatever group they form, are responsible for what you would call the other half of it, which would be building this huge building that's like a museum. Again, you know what I'm saying? And museum, in that case, he gets people. Stuff, he, he, he gets people to give money to build it, right? Yes. Another super. And you know, uh, and I mean, no, the LBJ uh, Donald, Donald Trump is is not going to pass up an opportunity to swindle some people out of money to and have another building. Paid. To build a building with his name yeah. on it. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's fairly adept at that, so uh, he'll probably be. Quite he's more adept at having that. people take their name, his name, off the buildings. Yeah. You know, because so I'm sure he'll have a library. You know, some because he was, his entire business used to be for the longest time lending his name to buildings being built that he had nothing to do with building. Yeah. And now a casino in the back. The, uh, no, now they're taking I, the. I uh, predict, hmm? What did I you say, Vernon? Be the 18th hole of the Doral Golf Course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that they that they um, uh, now uh, uh, are taking the names off of off of his buildings because they don't want it. I knew a couple who bought an, a, a condo in a Trump building. Uh, here on the uh, on the uh, west side, and uh, all the neighbors got together after he was president and petitioned to take the name off the building, and they did. And yeah, so Trump, his library will say the library of the forty fifth president. It'll what be about the size of a portable outhouse? And it won't yeah. say his name. <laughs> really? No, I'm. Just Oh, I see. I see. They're taking his name off of everywhere. No, else. you know that whatever library he builds is going to have Trump's name in gold letters. You know. Yeah, I mean they they can kind of design whatever they want if they raise the money or pay for it themselves. I mean they can build pretty much. You know, the government doesn't really have any sort of like uh, you know play or saying that or regulations or anything that I know of. Yeah, is is by the um, way, since you like historical sites, is is the uh, is Mar-a-Lago going to be the new Mount Vernon? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but After probably he becomes not. dictator, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm sure they'll have something, but I mean, the the case to turn the documents over, I mean, I, that's not really a surprise. I mean, that Look, they have to turn the documents over. I mean, what? I mean, you know, in a, in a case where the, the, the government already has the documents rightfully, and you know, there's basically a subpoena or a court order. Um, that kind. Of, I mean, look, you know, I'm saying. I mean, Nixon lost that case a couple of times, so there was already, you know. No real legal way. I think all the I think all that Trump was trying to do was stall things. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. So. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think everybody who dissented was the one Supreme Court justice who dissented was was Thomas. Yeah, Clarence Thomas. Yeah. Clarence Thomas and Jenny Thomas, his wife, got hundreds of thousands of dollars from groups that were petitioning the Supreme Court to. To not release the documents. She got money from them. Wow. Yes. Is can is that provable and isn't that criminal? I think no. she's a she's a like a political activist, a fundraiser. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, she funded a lot of the travel expenses for all those people that descended on Washington January sixth. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, really. She's a wow. piece of work. That's for sure. That's why he should have recruit recused himself from that whole case is because his wife 
You know, how is he going to be impartial? He, Giuliani was on the news today talking about that he's being, uh, that he's got to talk in front of the, in the January 6th meeting and stuff. And he says, I'm just going to, you know, I, I, lawyer privilege, what do you call it? Client lawyer privilege. That only works, if Ooh. I understand that right, when you're talking to Donald Trump back and forth. But when you talk to the public and say, go there and do this and do that, yeah, that, that isn't the attorney-client privilege. I think he's in deep shit. Yeah. Also, attorney-client privilege doesn't cover you for crime. If you're a lawyer right. advising right. a guy on crime, there's no attorney-client privilege. Right. Yep. Well, that's I why mean, most lawyers will tell you if you've been accused of something criminal, please don't tell me if you you're in a, if you're guilty. You know, you, you're guilty or or don't confess to the crime to me. Because then I have to abide by that and then assume your well, guilt you, and you, try and... You can actually tell your lawyer that yeah. you committed the crime. Yes. Your lawyer can just not have witnessed the crime or after the fact participate in it or have participated in it at the time. That's right. Or after the fact participate in any kind of cover-up. Well, in the case like of that. Giuliani... He doesn't have to tell no, lies because yeah. the police aren't allowed to ask him about it. I mean, I mean, you can tell your lawyer in confidence that, yeah, I, I killed that lady or whatever. That's right. And, and you, you know, probably want to help me. Well, in this particular it, but... case, in this particular case, uh, wasn't Giuliani a witness to the crime because he was there well, helping right. him commit I mean, it? That, that's where your conflict of interest would come in. Is, you know, your attorney could not have participated in it, witnessed it. Yeah, well, he was out there giving a speech, uh, riling everybody right. up, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And attorney-client privilege doesn't apply to that. Right. It also would not apply, I believe, to like third party communication. So yeah. Donald Trump tells Charlie to tell Rudy Giuliani this. It, it has to be, I believe, direct communication. Right. I believe direct communications. I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it covers, you know, like third party Doesn't cover hearsay. communication or communication that would take place with basically like a third party in the room. So yeah. Charlie is in the room, and he's not a lawyer in any shape or form. No counsel, doesn't work for counsel, anything like that. He's just a fucking janitor or whatever that's yeah. in the room. Well, that would be working for the lawyer, whatever. And they they discuss it. Then you know that's they their lawyer should know better, I believe. And then that's you know it gets waived in that case, or he can answer questions about it, but the other two parties still can't. So. I think it gets a little complicated here. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I don't have all that shit memorized. There's a lawyer listening. I'm sure they could call him. Yeah. So in a criminal, in a criminal act, you know, if you hire a criminal attorney to to protect you, you're going to have to tell him what you really did. Yeah. And in order for him Usually. to build up a case for you, how they do it, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, but yeah, you know. Um, Trump, as far as he's concerned, he's never committed a crime. Well, I don't know. I'm not my, you know, who my personal lawyer is Jeff. Jeff's my personal lawyer. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> he's taking his head. No. He, he plays one on 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 the on the ramble, but his wife is one, so he he can tell her things. Yeah, I know. I I I defer to her personally. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Smart man. Well, is she still practicing? Um, not really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she does certain things to help people. What was family. her What was her expertise? What area? Uh, really, environment. Good. Oh. Good. We can go after Trump for that too. Yeah, for smelling up the environment. Yeah. Anyway, so um um. Anybody got any big plans for the weekend? Umpire training. Okay, this is what? <laughs> umpire training tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. And when do you have to go back to umpiring? Uh, February 7th. <clears throat> really? So I lose you after that, right? Yeah. We'll every every rain or snow. What? We'll pray for rain or snow in Austin. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the days when you don't do it? Yeah, when I, yeah, yeah, if I get rained out or if I only get the two nights that I asked for. I asked for two nights and they gave me four last season. Oh, okay. But if, <laughs> what two nights have you asked for this time? Um, I, I usually ask for Tuesday and, and, and Thursday. But. Why don't you try Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> or 
Born Monday and Tuesday. Well, Monday, Tuesday Monday and Thursday. Monday. Tuesday's fine because I'm not on on Tuesday. No. Okay. Yeah. Good. Monday and Tuesday. By the way, starting next week, um, um, Jack is going to five days a week. Yeah. Um, and uh, he will be going on at, uh, at 1030 on yeah. Monday and Tuesday for an hour. Kind of taking over this time yeah, slot. Eastern Standard. Because I wave bye-bye to it. Because I'm, I, I am still working four days a week, but I have the Monday show, the pop-up, which has become very, very successful. And uh, the, um, uh, uh, then the three days I do here. So actually, I'm probably putting in more hours than he's going to put in with five shows. Okay? Because what's the, the three and a three? Four and a mm -hmm. half, five and a half that I'm yeah. going to be doing. So, you know. So, uh, Jack said, I'd like to go in there and just be straight on five days a week. And I said, fine with me, you know. What is he now? Huh? Four he's he's four, four nights. nights. Yeah. yeah. At midnight. But what he's going to do is Tuesday nights, he's not going to be on at midnight. He's going to be on at 1030. He's going to do Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. So, uh, that will be starting next Monday. Uh, and uh, 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 the exchange with uh, Damian Chaplin will move on Mondays, but not next week because he's had there's some something that his landlord is fixing or something at his apartment, his place that he can't uh, do his shows. But he will go on at, at uh, 9:30 Eastern time, and then go to 10:30, and then J Jack will come on. So there'll be it'll be some company there, some, some programming there. Do you so, have stuff still in his storage in the storage facility? Oh yeah, oh yeah, wow. I still do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had to put it somewhere. I mean, and and I would. What do I do? Ship it across the country? Yeah. What's you know. In there? And then once I get it, where do I put it? In another storage facility? You know. What's so it's better there? I just keep it there. What yeah. what's what's still in there? Uh, I got most of the tapes, most of the audio tapes. But I have a lot of videotapes still there uh, that I shot over the years. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, that's about it. You know, videos. Huh? Yeah, videos. Yeah, videos. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I would like to lay my hands on eventually. I mean, I'd like to get, uh, in fact, I should call Damien and get him to send me some. Because I, I do have the equipment to dub off all the old ones. I have a Super 8 machine here. I have an 8 millimeter. I mean, I have all these different kinds of machines here that I can use to dub them off but you know uh, Does, uh, any live 105 days yeah a lot of live 105 stuff yeah I shot yeah, a lot that, of that would be so cool to see huh that yeah. would be so cool to see well I have some of it uh, is already online uh, oddly enough one of my concerts that I did at the Great American Music Hall I have on uh, uh, what do you call it? Roku on my Roku channel. Are you paying for storage out here? What? Are you paying for storage out yeah. here? Am I paying for storage? Yeah. No, no. Okay, you got this at somebody's house or something. No, I've got this in a storage facility out in California. Right, but you're, you're, paying, just... you're paying for the storage facility. Oh, yeah, but you said here, and I said no. No, here, here, here in California. Here. Oh, okay, yeah, no, in California, yeah. Yeah, I'm paying about 100, 180 a month, you know. Is it a lot of stuff? I have a big garage. I'd do it for you for free. Uh, I don't know if this, well, this might fit in your garage, you know. Uh, yeah, but is yours in environmentally controlled? N no, not really. Oh, no? Oh, no. Oh. My old one was, uh, but uh, not uh, not the newest one. But uh, I might talk to you about it if you if you're interested, you know. I'll talk to and you and you could talk to Damien and work the whole thing out. You know. Where's Damien at? Huh? He's in. Is this all in Petaluma? Is this all in Petaluma? No, Santa Rosa, I think, is where. Oh, up to Petaluma. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but you know, well, we can talk about it. But uh, yeah, in my old age, my fans take care of me. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. So anyway, so I. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, Jack will be doing that, and uh, I hope everybody maybe will go and join him. It's not going to be video, however, 
because that's too much for me to teach Jack. Yeah. God, I wish you could teach him how to work Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now here's the problem with Zoom. Okay, I can I could get him up and running on Zoom pretty easy. But the problem is, is that he has to have a place where he can put that address that people use to call. Okay, now I've got a Facebook page, and I put it up there. I, I you know, I can probably put it up on, on, I've thought about it that it's possible for me to put it up on the, uh, the, the GabNet page. Yeah, but everybody sure. has to have that address and um, in order to join the, the party, as it were. So uh, to be able to get that out there is the biggest problem. But uh, no, I could get them up and running, I think, on Zoom. But then again, he's also going to have to pay for Zoom, too, like 15 bucks a month because you can't... I don't want him using mine because that, I, it, it can't be done. The, the, yeah, I could have him use mine, but once I sign off, I have to, it, it's too much trouble. So somebody, we have to have two separate accounts. So there are a lot of there are a lot of logistical things that have to take place in order for me to pull it off. Not uh, like Netflix, where you can share the access. Right? Well, yeah. Well, you got to be careful about that. Don't don't share access with somebody in California, um, because uh, uh, I, you know, there's one account that I'm sharing with Patrick because I wanted him to watch The Mandalorian, uh, but. Um, I won't say, well, of course, it's the Disney now. I said yeah. Mandalorian. <laughs> but they don't like you doing that. They hate that. Because, I mean, I can have as many people as I want, for instance, on the Disney Channel, you know, on Disney. And Netflix, I don't know. I think I can have several people on that too yeah. five yeah, I think it's like yeah. five five, five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so people are doing this and saying okay we'll just sign on using my name and so you know your aunt minnie out in wherever does it and gets away with it you know but uh um uh, they don't like you doing it they hate that i think this they're looking for a way that they can kind of stop you from doing that i think so it you Huh? I'm sorry. If you got him on Zoom and he's tied on money, I'll I'll pay for the first year, fifteen dollars a month. What do I care? One hundred and eighty dollars for a year? Yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I think he can afford it too. But I mean, it, it's a matter of that. It's just logistically. First logistic is getting him to be able to use Zoom. Okay, that's the first logistic. Yeah. That's <laughs> a big one. Once we've gone past that barrier, it's... Well, he gets on this show sometimes. Yeah. Wait a minute, he does know how to use Zoom. That lying sack of shit. Yep. <laughs> now I got him in trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'd get him on Zoom. I could because I could put the address on the uh, Gabnet page. You know, have a separate one for his yeah. show and a separate one That's for what my I do. show. I go to Gabnet and I click the link on the Gabnet page to get on this show. Yeah, well, I would just change that thing so it says, you know, Zoom here for yeah, Jack's show one. and Zoom here for Alex's right. show. And, Absolutely. Yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, it's a problem with those logistics. And then, of course, I'm, I'm never going to be able to get him up and running doing the thing on video. I'm sorry, you know. It's That's just... I'm going to call Alan... Alan will take care of it. Alan? Alan will be his IT. No, oh. Alan won't be his IT. No, no. I mean, I don't know. How, I don't, I don't know how many. How many of you would know how to set up a show like this, uh, with Zoom and everything on on? Uh, Ryan. Oh. Yeah. Probably. We did every day. The only way you could do it, I'll tell you the way you could do it, uh, simply, is in Zoom. If you go down to the bottom of Zoom. And you scroll across the page there, and it says more. What it says is you can zoom to Facebook, or you can zoom to um, uh, what do you call it? To uh, 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 YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, and that will put the directly on, but you can't do any of the bells and whistles and stuff like that. Like I have the graphics at the beginning of the show. It's mm -hmm. more like my Monday show. The Monday show is done that way. Very simple. We could do it that way. He could he could get up and running on it that way, 
but then we'd have to get him a Facebook page and a YouTube uh, thing. So you know, it's it's all, and then uh, it's too much too much of a learning curve, and that's my problem with it. But anyway. Let me see here. What else? Was there anything else in the news that I saw today? Uh, nothing really. Um, you know, same old, same old stuff. You know, you tune on all these news networks, and they they're just running the same five stories over and over and over again. Um, and uh, I, I mean, did hear one interesting thing uh, on the Stephen Colbert last week, Alex. There was something interesting on Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Alert during, the during, press. During what? His, during his during his monologue, he said there was a study done in Austin, Texas, and there was a, such a thing as COVID dick. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. COVID yeah. dick. They studied. Yes, they studied 700 people over a long period of time, and people who had COVID, men who had COVID, were three times more likely to have erectile dysfunction. <laughs> yep, that's funny. <clears throat> well, also, they're they're also finding that kids that have COVID are much more likely to to get uh, erectile dysfunction. Diabetes. A what? Diabetes. Oh, diabetes. Okay. Diabetes. <clears throat> really? <clears throat> now, what if you've been vaccinated? Less of a chance of getting. Uh... Less of a chance of getting. Yeah, and I got fifteen pound balls too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that little that little thing. Those are bolly balls. What are you talking about? Pick them up right now. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen pounds. That's a bolly ball. Who who was it that said that? Some. And you can throw your back out getting out of that chair, Kevin. You bet. That's why I sit here the whole time. Who was the singer that brought up that that she had a friend? It's Cardi B. Cardi B. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't heard from her lately, have we? After well, that little. You know what? You know what this is, don't you, Alex? What? You know what this is, right? No. I'm flipping you a bird with arthritis. You watched Be Positive last <laughs> be night. Positive, you yeah. watched Be Positive last <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. I, I cracked me up. I, I'm, 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 I'm flipping you, but I, I have arthritis. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, somebody says something to her, and she goes, uh, <laughs> like that, you know. Um, That's true. I love that show. I really love that yeah. show. I think it's a very well done show. And did you see his? his oh, this is a great one. This was a, he has these uh, what they call vanity cards at the end of the show. He makes up these little cards, and they go by really fast. So you got to freeze yeah, frame yeah, your TV yeah. set, right? The one for this week read: "Screw it, Liz Cheney for 2024." <laughs> Uh, yes, 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 Might, yes. Maybe she'll run. It, well, could be. I mean, I I couldn't vote for her. Could you? Man. Come on. Yeah. You know. So she was right on one thing. That doesn't mean she went horribly wrong. On all oh, yeah. Things. I mean, she was a terrible person otherwise, but it, it, she, she, she got principles, okay? But that was only because everybody was attacking her for her principles. Anyway, the thing going around that it was going to be Cheney and, and, and Kamala and one on the ticket for one point. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good one. Yeah. Hey, listen, there's our theme uh, going at us here. Kevin, thank you so much. Always good to see you here. Uh, and, uh, of course, Charlie Wallace. Thank God there isn't any baseball right now. And, uh, 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 Josh, thank you for being here uh, and, uh, and giving us your wisdom. Jeff, you look very relaxed down in Florida. I am. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. I sat at the beach. I yeah. sat at the beach today. Really? Wow. Did people have a mask on? No, oh, it's Florida. Forget it. That's a silly question. Uh, uh, Alan, thank you. Thanks to Vernon. Everything good in Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah. And just stay safe. I'm trying to stay healthy. Yeah, that's it. And Brian, oh, you look so professorial now with your newly acquired glasses. This Isn't... is amazing. I can see so clear and the colors are so... Uh, he just looks old. Yes, well, 
this, you know why I do this? Not to see clearly. It hides the bags under my eyes. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. Yes, sir. And they're out of here, and so am I, folks. Uh, we'll be back again on Monday for the pop-up show at, uh, at 4, 30, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. In the meantime, uh, uh, th- and then we'll be back, of course, again on uh, Wednesday at 10.30. In the meantime, uh, you know, um, do what I always tell you. If you see her, tell her I love her. And please, you know, wear a mask if you don't have the vaccination. If you do have the vaccination but you don't have the booster, get it, damn it. And we'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show. Thanks for being here. Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.